A transport swab is a cotton-tipped swab with a protective case and media to preserve the sample during shipment. The swabs can be used for mold screens and viable analysis. Utilize a transport swab in the following manner. 1. Pull apart the plastic wrapping of the swab until it is halfway open. 2. Grasp the swab by the plastic handle at the top and remove from the wrapping. Do not touch the shaft. 3. Designate a location to be swabbed, taking care to note the size of the area. 4. Swab the entire area in a zigzag pattern, rolling the swab over to ensure the entire swab is used. 5. Remove the cap from the swab case and discard. 6. Carefully insert the swab into the case, making sure to seat the cap firmly on the case and that the swab end is touching the media-soaked sponge at the bottom. 7. Label the sample with a unique identifier, such as the location the sample was taken and the date. 8. Place in a cooler to prevent microbial proliferation of the sample. Notes for swab sampling. Some investigators prefer to sample with a wet swab rather than a dry swab, as noted above. The media-soaked sponge in the swab case can be used for wetting the swab, as the media is sterile. Tap water should not be used as a wetting agent, because it may contain microorganisms that could interfere with analysis. The size of the swabbed area should be noted on the chain of custody. If a viable analysis is requested, a measure of CFUs per square centimeter can be obtained from this information. The area should be no larger than 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, or roughly 4 inches by 4 inches, as too large an area may provide inaccurate data. Because several analyses can be performed from a single swab, there is no need to take multiple samples from the same area. Swabs should be shipped in a cooler to arrive at the laboratory within 72 hours of collection to maintain sample integrity. Obtain a tape sample using biotape provided by Galson. 1. Open the plastic container. 2. Remove the slide. 3. Place the tape against the surface to be sampled. 4. Gently press down on the tape using the other hand. 5. Slowly peel the tape slide off the surface. 6. Place the slide inside the plastic container. 7. Close the container and label it with a unique identifier, such as the sampling location and the date. Alternatively, transparent adhesive tape can also be used if biotape is not available in the field. Notes for tape sampling. The tape used must be transparent, as the sample will be analyzed by direct microscopy, and therefore must be able to transmit light. Do not use electrical tape or frosted magic tape, as no analysis can be completed. Avoid creasing or folding the tape. The tape should be as flat as possible at all times to ensure accurate analysis. Creases interfere with the ability to visualize the trapped spores on the tape. Tape samples can be analyzed only by direct microscopy. No viable analysis can be completed on a tape sample. Then, complete the chain of custody form. It is important that you include all the information requested in order to ensure the turnaround time of your samples. Please indicate what process was being sampled, such as welding, electroplating, etc., in the comments section of the chain of custody form. Remove the pink copy and keep this for your records. Send the white and yellow copies in with the samples to the lab in the large Ziploc bag. Questions? Contact SGS Galson by phone or IH Live Chat.